Today we're going to be looking at drawing Bohr models using the electron configuration. So we do need to remember that Bohr models are not accurate. We know that electro electrons do not exist in rings around a nucleus. We know that they are in orbitals like the s, p, and d, and f orbital using the electron cloud model, but it is still a really useful model. And so because it is a useful model, we're going to learn how to draw Bohr models using an electron configuration. So the first thing that we need to recognize with Bohr models is that we represent, represent energy levels as rings around the nucleus, okay? So we're representing energy levels as rings around the nucleus. Now, during electron configuration, this was the, the big number in front. So the one, the two, the three, the four. And so we're just going to say, all right, that entire energy level with all of those orbitals is represented by one singular ring around a nucleus in this model. So let's do an example, oxygen. Okay, so the electron configuration of oxygen um, we know it has eight electrons, and so our electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. And so we're going to use this to draw our Bohr models. You may have learned previously the 288 model, where two on the first ring, eight on the second ring, eight on the third. And while that does have some basis in truth, it's not the entire truth. And so we really want to look at the electron configuration because that will actually tell us how many electrons we're going to represent as dots on our Bohr model. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a nucleus. And so I'm just going to represent the nucleus with a, smir a, um, a smirkle, <laughs> a circle in the middle. And inside of the circle, I'm going to write how many protons there are. Now, I'm not going to write neutrons because we don't know the mass number. We don't know what isotope it is. So all I'm going to do is write how many protons there are because all oxygen um, atoms will have eight protons. So I'm going to write 8p in the middle to rep 8p plus to represent our protons. Okay. Now looking at this electron configuration, the energy levels tell us how many rings to draw. So this one is the first energy level. The two and the two, even though they're different orbitals, they're on the same energy level. So this tells me that I have two energy levels to draw. So one, two. And I'm just going to draw this as rings around my nucleus. Now the next question is, well, how many electrons am I going to put on those rings? Well, this also comes from the electron configuration. 1s2. The 2 in the exponent position tells us that there are two electrons. And so on the first ring, meaning the innermost ring of our Bohr model, I'm going to draw two electrons. And I'm just going to draw these as dots on my circle to represent electrons on this first energy level. Now for the second, I have 2s2 and 2p4. So yes, they're in different orbitals, s and p, but they're on the same energy level, which means that 2 plus 4 is 6. So I have a total of 6 electrons on my second energy level. So 1, 2, 3, four, five, and six. And that is a Bohr model of oxygen. One thing I do want to point out to you is this, uh, the electrons on the outermost ring are also called valence electrons. So you may have heard this term before, but valence electrons are the electrons on the outermost energy level. So in this case, oxygen would have six valence electrons because it's on the outermost energy level. Okay, let's go ahead and do another example. And let's do um, iron this time. Okay, iron we know is in that D block, so it does have um, an electron configuration with a d orbital. So if I write out the electron configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 
4s2 and then 3d6, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and now that I've got my electron configuration, I'm going to start drawing my Bohr model with putting the um, protons in the center. So iron has an atomic number of 26, which means it has 26 protons. So in the center, I'm going to draw a small circle that rep is representing my nucleus, 26 protons. Okay, now how many rings to draw? Well, that depends on how many energy levels there are. So looking at the electron configuration, I have one energy level, two energy levels, three energy levels, including that 3d6, and then four. So I'm gonna draw four rings because there are four energy levels. One, two, three, Four. Okay, and now just start placing your electrons on those rings. So 1s2, meaning 2 on this innermost ring. Oops, sorry. 1, 2. Got ahead of myself there. 1, 2 for 1s2. And then 2s2, 2p6. That's a total of 8 electrons on the second energy level. 2 from the s orbital, 6 from the p orbital. So I'm going to draw 8 on the second ring. So 1 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now let's look at the third energy level. I have a 3s2, a 3p6, but then I also have a 3d6. So I have to add all of these together in order to figure out how many to put on that three, on that third ring. So three plus, um, excuse me, two plus six is eight, 8 plus 6 is 14. So I'm going to put 14 electrons on this third ring because on the third energy level in the s, the p, and the d orbital, I have 14 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay. So I just did 14 electrons on the third energy level because there's two from the s orbital, six from the p orbital, and six from the d orbital. So six plus six plus two is 14. Now for that fourth energy level, 4s2, I only have two because of that s orbital. So one, two. So that is the Bohr model for iron. So when you're looking at the drawing Bohr models, we are representing these energy levels with rings around the nucleus, and then we're using dots to represent electrons, and we're doing this based on the electron configuration.